There are two good ways to play an angled shot like this. Firstly without any side spin, and secondly by playing it with the opposite spin to the angle of the cut, like left hand side here. On a straight shot like this it simply wouldn't matter, and if I could get the cue ball into this space directly in line with the pocket, then I'm simply going to pop the ball. But on an angled shot it isn't that simple. If you repeat the same process without any side spin you're likely to miss. So why exactly does this happen? So to show what's happening with this shot I'm going to be using slow motion and this pool ball. As you can see I get the cue ball in exactly the right place here, dead in line with the pocket. But this shot clearly isn't working because the cue ball's pulling the object ball wide onto the jaw. But what happens if you use the opposite side spin? I'm playing this shot to the right, so I'm going to play it with left hand side. Well that goes right in the middle of the pocket. I may have potted this, but did I have to hit it thinner in order to do so? Well, no. You can see I got the cue ball exactly where I wanted it here, and this time instead of running wide, the object ball goes straight in line with the pocket. And it's visibly different to this shot where I play it deliberately thinner without side spin. It's difficult to see from this angle, but this should have gone to the far jaw, but instead it heads towards the centre of the pocket. You can begin to see what's happening by watching the blue band of the 10 ball. It runs straight towards the pocket instead of wobbling when you play it with side. The cause of this effect is usually referred to as impact throw, and it can push an object ball offline. But how does it work? It creates a similar effect to having two balls close together like this, and then playing into them at an angle. It causes the second ball to break wide. Fortunately on regular shots you don't have to think about this anywhere near as much as you would with a plant. However the greater the angle, the more it's going to pull the object ball wide. If you think about where the cue ball needs to go in order to pop the ball, this doesn't really affect the shot too much until you're only hitting about half of the object ball from your perspective. And also I'm hoping it's going to be obvious if I'm cutting the ball to the left, it's going to straighten up to the right side of the pocket. And while we're getting the obvious things out of the way, from this angle you're going to need right hand side to straighten it up. So why not just play every shot with the outside spin? Well the problem is, it's not exactly as easy as that. Because side spin makes the cue ball deflect off line, this left hand side is going to deflect the cue ball over to the right, and if I don't allow for that I'm going to miss. And of course this deflection is affected by power. The harder you play the shot, the further it's going to deflect by. And of course as the cue ball slows down, the spin begins to grip the cloth and change its direction. Not by very much, but certainly enough for you to miss anything. Happily for us now though, it also changes the direction of the object ball very slightly by throwing it in the opposite direction to the spin. And that's the very effect we're using to make the 10 ball track to the pocket instead of being dragged wide like on other shots. But why exactly does this happen? The reason to that is slightly different to what you might expect. Top spin as we've already seen drags the object ball wide but what happens if we hit the cue ball somewhere else? And if you play a stun shot where you strike the cue ball close to the centre and make it slide towards the object ball does it make a difference? Well, no, it doesn't seem to be any different to a topspin shot, really. However, it's a little bit different if I go to play the shot with backspin. It seems that the lower you strike the cue ball, the less the object ball is thrown wide. It by no means eliminates it entirely, but it does seem to reduce the effects of impact throw. So if I play this shot with maximum backspin, it's still going to straighten up but only by about half as much as it would if I was to play a top spin shot. And something unusual happens if I play it with inside spin as well. This is where I'm playing it with the same side spin as I'm cutting it, so I'm playing it with right hand side and cutting it to the right here. As we saw earlier, the right hand side on a straight shot actually pushes the object ball a little bit further to the left, so in theory this should throw wider and make us miss by further. But for some reason it doesn't. It seems to prevent the object ball from being thrown so wide, just like the backspin shot earlier, which doesn't make any sense. And weirder still, if you play the shot with backspin and inside spin, 
You almost eliminate the throw altogether. So what exactly is going on? Well, a lot of this seems to be caused by the object ball sliding rather than rolling forward the instant it strikes the cue ball. We can call this impact slide and it seems to affect topspin and stun shots quite a bit. You can see the 10 ball here only rotating quarter of a turn over about a foot of table. So you'd probably expect the outside spin shot to roll straight away, but it doesn't. It actually slides quite a bit. So what's going on with this? To start off with, the side spin is spinning the object ball in the direction we want it to go. It's a bit like me walking by an object and grabbing it. It comes with me. The cue ball does the same thing with the object ball. It grabs it for a short space of time. That is unless it's spinning. And the fact that the cue ball spinning away from the object ball seems to prevent any friction between the cue ball and object ball during the brief moment of contact and prevents it from grabbing it. Which means the spin doesn't take the object ball with it so much so it cuts a little bit more and runs straighter towards the pocket. Whereas both backspin and inside spin also reduce impact throw, they do it in a different way. Both of these shots seem to produce less impact slide, and I think that's all because they reduce the amount that the object ball is bouncing. So I decided to jump into the object ball and this made it throw about as wide as we've seen yet. So what seems to happen is when the cue ball hits the object ball, the more the object ball leaves the table, the more the cue ball takes the object ball with it. Whereas if the object ball stays on the bed of the table and instantly starts rolling, the friction from this seems to prevent it from being pulled wide by the cue ball. It seems that impact throw doesn't happen while the object ball is on the bed of the table, but as soon as it leaves it, the cue ball can start pulling the object ball wide. But before we do any more, we're just going to find Dr. Yurts from Mogrev Belarus, which is roughly there. So now we know what happens, what does it mean? Top spin shots and stun shots seem to be affected by this most because of how they make the cue ball bounce. But shots with back spin and shots with inside spin are less affected by this because they keep the object ball on the table a little bit more. The outside spin on these shots just prevents the cue ball from taking the object ball with it. Think about this as a spin removing all friction between the cue ball and object ball. They still make contact, but the effects of the friction aren't felt on the object ball. So you can use outside spin to prevent an object ball from throwing wide, but this isn't necessarily a good idea. Partly because you're making the shot a little bit harder, but mostly because you're going to run out of position more often than not. It's actually far easier to allow for the impact throw than to play every shot with outside spin. All you need to do on thinner shots like this is allow a little bit more. I'm aiming to pot it off this jaw here, so when I play the shot and it slides a little bit wide, it's not going to make too much difference. And after we find Montazar from Benghazi, Libya, we're going to find how the pace of the shot affects it as well. Predictably, the harder you play the shot, the more the object ball is going to bounce and the more it's going to throw wide. Fortunately, it isn't that significant. A faster shot breaks wider than a slower shot by such a little fraction that you're probably not even going to notice when you're playing. There are a few things that are vital to remember on a shot, like if you're going to play this as a stun shot, you're going to have to cut it a little bit more than if you're going to play it as a screw shot. So you really need to make up your mind before you go down to play it. And if I've got a mega thin shot like this, I can cut it a little bit more using either side spin and using back spin is only going to help as well. So putting any side spin on the ball will help you cut it, but it'll do a fraction more with outside spin. So how worried do you need to be about the effects of impact throw when you play snooker? Well, fortunately, not that much. This is just something to be aware of. With enough practice, you'll adapt to this naturally, and you probably won't ever have to think about it. The only thing we haven't looked at is the effects of impact throw on cushion shots. This is a little bit different again, 
but I do explain it in this video about cushion shots, or if you want to know more about side spin in general, then have a look at that video. And remember, don't just watch play, and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel, and visit the website. See you later.